to go ahead and let them introduce themselves right now. Hi, I'm Lindsay Rogers. I am one of the lead paranormal investigators at Crescent Sanatorium in prison. Yeah, I'm Angel Morales, and I am another lead investigator at uh, Crescent Sanatorium in prison. Okay, well, thank you for coming on to the show. Um, I hope me. I don't uh, bombard you with these questions. Uh, I didn't know where to start or how long that you guys have been doing the tour guides and whatnot. So if I go too far you know, back in history, just let me know. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I was doing some research, I thought like one of the more interesting things about the creation of the building itself is that, uh, is it true that Andrew Carnegie donated the property for like a dollar? Absolutely. Yeah. Andrew Carnegie originally purchased the property to build a summer home for his mom. Um, but unfortunately she passed away before he got a chance to build anything. So, um, at the time TB was really big. A lot of, you know, a lot of people were getting tuberculosis. So he said to the state, I'll sell it to you for a dollar. Um, if you promise to build a tuberculosis sanatorium, um, so that's oh. how it got started. That was in 1911. Okay, cool. So it was, hinged on his deal that that it that it became that yeah yeah um, yeah an amazing um, dollar mm -hmm. yeah for sure especially because at least at the time from what i was reading this was one of the i don't know earlier uh, maybe not the first of the tuberculosis sanatoriums but certainly one of the first few that I came believe, to exist i believe at the time pennsylvania only had about three tuberculosis hospitals yeah, and we were one of them yeah, yeah. No, it was one of the more advanced ones, I believe, what they were set up, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Which is advanced as it could be at the time because, like, yeah. the yeah, exactly. now. <laughs> yeah, for that time, for 1912 time period, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that, all right, that's cool. That's an interesting fact for sure. So, for anybody who's listening who's maybe not familiar, uh, I guess we kind of gave out the information that this building or collection of buildings, there's what, 15 of them? No. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's over 20. Yeah, oh. 17. That, uh... Yeah, there's there's only, yeah, there's over 20 within the fence line. Okay. So, yeah, so these buildings started as a tuberculosis unit, and um, so a lot of people came and, and stayed during that period of time when we were trying to figure that out medically. Um, so I was doing some reading, and I noticed that there were a lot of, like, recreational buildings and stuff i i saw that there if my information's right no no um, please there were like was there like like a like a building to swim in as well swimming pool yeah so yeah they had the they had the main sanatorium um mm -hmm. but then they also had the outer buildings as well and one of them was a swimming pool yes. um it later got transitioned into surgery because they started to yeah. perform surgery on people's lungs to try to kill them of TB at the time. So, that was our building seven. Yeah, that was that's what we call building seven right now. It originally yeah. started as an indoor swimming pool. It was one story. Yeah. Now, then it turned into two stories for the surgery yep. center. Okay. So I have a 2023 perspective on TB. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm in my thirties. It wasn't anything that we really ever had to worry about. So yeah. I yeah. actually don't know a lot about the illness itself. And, you know, Learning about the history of these buildings, um, it kind of seems like a really daunting and dreadful thing. So yeah, yeah absolutely. It's so tuberculosis is a is a lung disease, um, and it's highly highly contagious. Yeah. Um. So just like COVID, how we quarantine with COVID, it was the same situation with tuberculosis. Only they felt it was best to take everyone that had TB and put them in one location yeah. and try to cure them, try to treat them, try to isolate them and try to protect the rest of the community. Especially in a high altitude area. They believe that that clear, crisp air mm -hmm. was, you know, a big, a big factor in the healing process. And, uh, it, uh, is, a, uh, as you can imagine with the pandemic that we went through the, the tragedy at its time, it was its own pandemic. I mean, yeah. unimaginable. Yeah. Yeah. They started to experiment with uh, the surgery that I was talking about. Like some of the surgery was to 
remove one of the lungs or yeah. remove rib cages to allow the lungs to breathe or deflate a lung to let it rest. Like there was all these like barbaric ways that they tried to treat it because at the time they didn't have they come didn't up understand. With, yeah, they didn't come up with a treatment yeah. with it until the 1950s when streptomycin, the development of streptomycin came in. Okay. Yeah. So with all of that said, it's, it may be easy to assume that, you know, that's kind of like a really awful way to go, so to speak. Yeah. So it would be, yeah. So easy to like assume that a spirit might then stay in that area due to kind of that level. The trauma. The the trauma. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. People would talk about how um, if you were a patient there, the person next to you would just start coughing up blood and it would just hemorrhage from their lungs uh, and die. Like, wow. so, I mean, it sounded horrific. And then to even get the diagnosis, they said it was like yeah. a death sentence. Yeah. And okay. you just never knew. You never knew when it was going to hit. You didn't know how bad. And you, imagine and, waking up every day. Like it really legitimately could be your last coughing fit. Like it's really, it's horrible. And Unimagined. there was a, a children unit on site, right? Yes. So that it, like a lot of children were also suffering. Yeah. So originally what they built the schoolhouse, we know it as building one yeah. or also known as the Maple Schoolhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, it originally was built as a preventatorium because what was happening was parents were being uh, admitted for tuberculosis and the children didn't have a place yeah. to go. So they were housing the children in the Maple Schoolhouse to try to prevent them from getting tuberculosis. And that worked for a little bit until... But- they started to get tuberculosis. So then eventually they were treated for TB. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I can't imagine. That's awful. I, I have think three, I, three kids myself. I just, yeah, we have, like, we have, we have four. four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're in a kid competition here. I have zero. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think the survival rates were actually quite dark for tuberculosis. Uh, it, right? wasn't, like, uh, it was, I don't know the number, but it for, wasn't good. For a, adults, uh, and it's been a while since I've looked at these numbers, but I'm pretty sure it was something like 65% of adults that contracted, contracted tuberculosis that. would eventually die. And children was worse. It was something like three uh, and four. Yeah. Children yeah. Because their lungs were little, they weren't fully yeah. developed yet. So to get that lung disease would be. Yeah. So, I mean, over, even with like the lower percentage with the adults, over half is, I mean, yeah, that's your a, point. That's you're pulling yeah. a, you're <laughs> Russian roulette, right? Like yeah. if you get yeah. it, mm-hmm. I might die. I might live. So yeah. like she said, you know, it was, uh, it was basically almost like a death sentence when you got, you know, told you had it. It's you basically kind of was like, all right, just, okay. you can't yeah. it. it's yeah. horrible. So, and then and what can you even do No, yeah. <laughs> at that time? Nothing. Yeah. Sit outside in the mountain, enjoy the trees. Yeah. I mean, listening to everyone else cough around you and the horrific screams and the, surgeries and it's the, just, the surgeries is what gets me yeah, i can't imagine having your lung deflated and ribs removed yeah. to try to treat it uh, like so that we talked you talked yeah you talked about some of those experimental surgery is uh, and some of the treatments i think and and i'm pretty sure this was tuberculosis but I, if i'm mistaken i apologize but i think at one point they had tried some solution of like mercury and yeah, water I where they I were read that as well where yeah. they were were like funneling mercury into the lungs to like flush it out and then it just ended up obviously mercury is poisonous yeah yeah, it's yeah. Just yeah. yeah how just if, yeah. If TB, how knowledgeable we were if tb didn't kill you you were lucky that the treatment didn't kill you <laughs> right so as the experts i kind of i want to posture this question that i thought of earlier now like i said you know typically you kind of think of tragedy leading to hauntings and you know so to speak, those kinds of things obviously happen at your at your facilities. But with all of those wreck buildings and the swimming pool and such young children, do you think that this may have maybe been seen almost as like some kind of haven, so to speak? And maybe there are some spirits that, despite suffering so much, kind of their home, yeah, yeah. attached yeah. themselves to it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a there's a video that floats around on YouTube called um uh I can't think of the name of it now. Um but there there is a video floating around on YouTube uh that they interview a gentleman that had tuberculosis and was at Crescent and survived it. And he talks about his experience and I think they had two other people on there as well. Um I think it was called Life at the Sand, actually is what I think it's called. Life at the Sand. 
So, and he talks about his experience in a positive way. Yeah. He talks about how amazing the nursing staff was, how great everybody was. And he remembers that place so well. And he doesn't want people to forget what a wonderful place yeah. it was. Um, so I do think that a lot of people had positive experiences. We've heard reports from nurses that came in and we've heard lots of, that was we've their heard life lots of positive goal. stories. Yeah. Everyone. So there yeah. was a lot of positivity. Um, and you know, Angel and I talk a lot about how there's good and bad always paranormal stuff that goes mm-hmm. on on campus. And I think, you know, that's where you kind of see that good and bad come in. You have the spirits that, you know, yeah. that passed away that don't have any hate toward the people that no. took care of them or the sanatorium, but then you have tortured souls that are not yeah. happy. It's a beautiful thing. It's, you know, being a paranormal investigators, you know, you do it the right way. You, we've built, <clears throat> excuse me, we've built relationships with these spirits mm-hmm. and uh, that know us by name. We know them by name. And it's just, you know, there's yeah, that's always, incredible. Yeah, perfectly. There's always positive and, and negative, you know what I'm saying? But that's yeah. that's our job, to find out and build the relationship. Okay, so that kind of almost segues perfectly into my next question here. And, I mean, it was a, a simple one, but I was curious, how many encounters do you think you've had on on this site? Oh, my goodness. Oh. I mean, you're talking about me and her have been there since the beginning, two oh, years. of. Uh, we. I mean, we... We have a home in Evansburg, eight minutes away, and you know, on I guess what you would say, normal people's downtime. Our normal time was, hey, let's just go check out what's going on over there. Throw on our backpack, and uh, yeah, I mean, we've never been up there and not had an experience. and not had oh wow happen, and that is a hundred percent honesty. Okay, Whether it that's... be positive, negative, it's just something. It's a lot that yeah. that facility. Our property is very well alive. Is there a building that sees more activity than others? Oh, yeah. Yes. I'll let my fiance. Uh, I'll let you tell the story. So uh, <laughs> my favorite building and my uh, the one that I would say sticks out to me the most, and I would say honestly with Brian and Michaela as well, is um, Building F. Uh, this building, when I say... In the paranormal field, you can experience anything and everything, positive to as dark as you can imagine, um, every night, to calling names, full body apparitions, shadows, trigger objects, um, things that I've seen crawling on the ceiling. Um, It sounds like crowds of people walking in. Me and her were sitting in a basement one day. It sounded like a crowd of people walked in. We walked upstairs expecting to open the door. When we opened the door, typical story, silence, looked down the hallway, not a soul there. Um, People have walked out, heard their names being called from the building. I mean, intelligent. When I say beyond intelligent, it is just... We had one night where we were not sure if there was a girl that was being possessed. Oh, I would let her carry into the story. We had to escort her out of the building Mm -hmm. and get her down to the visitor center until she finally started to act normal. But she was... She she ended up leaving. She was not... She went completely, like, nonverbal with us. She was just staring. And when she would talk, it was, she wants me to come back. I need to go back to this room. It was very... And to set the tone, it was like Blair Witch. Like, we found her... In standing in a, a corner, filing cabinet. just staring at a filing staring. cabinet, and, and it I was, was like, like, "Ma'am, are you okay?" And she's just yeah. She came with sisters, and they were even like, "We we've never seen her like this." And you know, I was a trainer of the company at the time. She is Lindsay has always been my right hand, so it was like we had to escort her out, and she was not there. The way she would look at you, it was when people say it like they're looking through you. It was like looking through you to the point where I was like, I have no idea what this woman is capable of. Uh, And uh, the very next rotation, her family actually took her out of there. And you're talking about, you're spending quite a bit of money. And I don't think she survived two hours from the open. Oh, wow. You know, and we used to run it till 6 a.m. So, well, that, that's my, I love that. That's my favorite building. I'm that crazy guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> People run out so and she's holding me, but. <laughs> man, right? yeah. Well, I mean, if you're looking for that kind of evidence or proof yeah. of some kind of Action. existence out there. Oh, if absolutely. you're out, like that's, I agree with you. I think I would probably want to see the Blair Witch stuff too. You just, it's, just, it's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's out of world. It's like, 
our favorite you thing is skeptics, you know? So you mentioned that you have these good and bad relationships sometimes yeah. with these these spirits or entities. I want to pose a question here, and this might be okay. a little bit of a, of a flip of a question. Um, so in, in many different religions, there are the beliefs that with with these bad events that culminates, um, I don't know if I'm going to say evil, but sort of like demonic presences. And that's like just a general term I'm using. I'm not speaking to any specific religion. But last week we talked about mimics, okay. which are entities that mimic yeah. so what what if these are all actually demonic experiences and they're mimicking the good and the bad so we we have a thing between us and that we very much uh be careful with using the d word um okay we have like i'm saying there's a i call it our buddy to show you how crazy we are the one that we've seen i've seen in the ceiling in ep she saw it crawling on the ceiling in the chapel and we've actually talked to when we were at Penhurst, we were at a Paracon and um, we had two different psychics come up and have conversations with Lindsay. And, you know, this kind of goes hand in hand with, uh, you know, we're talking about the trauma, everything that happened over there. A lot of people have picked up that this was kind of like a, a self manifesting ball of negative yeah. energy that just created it's, itself it's a creation of negative events that have taken place yeah and it kind of manifested itself into a conscious being yeah um is so. what these psychics have told us about this thing that crawls mm -hmm. on the ceiling up there but i mean angel and i have been investigating for 10 11 years plus um, years yeah just several different places we've traveled all over in fact last night him and i were just at the at Monroe house, house in we just drove six and a half hours to get back here so, today <laughs> and that that place is labeled as a demon house and i still walked out of there saying i still wouldn't say the d word yet yeah, you but know there's something I'm not, there. i've been doing it oh, so okay. long i don't um i'm not quick to throw that yeah. around i don't believe that there's anything demonic at crescent mm -hmm. um the only thing dark that i think is there is that thing that has manifested itself yeah. into a conscious and being. it's not even like so much i would I say the d say, word yeah. but i would say more like it's uh like the other d word dominant it just feeds off negativity okay. yes yeah. like okay this is me this is mine i mean we run estes methods we run all sorts of audio where we're talking to our friendly spirits mm -hmm. and the next thing you know you get the anxiety, you get the panic. All of a sudden, the voices that are coming out the machines are panicking. He's coming, he's outside, then it disappears. And then we have our famous dark voice that comes through and we're kind of like, damn, all right, he's here. You know, okay. and with the tunnel system we have, it's a beautiful thing because we have a tunnel system that links to multiple buildings. And those are the buildings, including F, so the schoolhouse, administrative building, the original building five um, chapel where that being is said to be able to travel okay to mimic whatever you want to call it. but there have been tv shows that have actually caught the mimics mm -hmm. and the voices and the equipments and you know people that have seen people that they know who they are but maybe not who they are you know what i'm saying so all right so i have a follow-up on everything that you just said and then i have basically the next question after that but I want to start with the follow-up, which is actually now a question that I had for, you know, kind of towards the end here. Um, but do you, did you ever think before you spoke to this psychic who explained that this is, you know, a uh, self-creation, so to speak, of, of despair, um, did you ever consider that this, this buddy of yours was... Um, Joseph Callinger? Is that how we say his name? The serial oh, killer? So we've I, talked to Joseph. We've talked to Jay Callinger. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a spirit there. He's not aggressive at all, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that his I, he was obviously arrested for yeah. murder, and he is, you know, he was a psychopath mentally, for sure. He was not mentally there. Yeah, but he's not. He, You can mostly talk to him in iBlock, which was the old RA2 at, at the time. Yeah, um, but, And he'll talk back to you, mm -hmm. but he's not. I don't think at all he's yeah. anything to do with the negative energy. Yeah, I don't think. Energy. Okay. I don't think as a human entity that he's strong enough to really cause. Okay. Harm. Okay. That's the perfect way to say yeah. it. Yeah. I think it's the perfect way to say it. Okay, that makes yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, I know you called that entity your buddy, but do you have a favorite 
spirit or entity that you've interacted with that he's my favorite <laughs> i have I, that is like the moment i laid eyes on him it was it was a, such a beautiful situation i have oh man it's like roped me in everyone has that one addicting occasion and i am like glued to figuring out what it is and that one is uh you know, when we start getting those knocks or we start getting that little growl or we start getting uh, people are like, it sounds like something's on the ceiling. That's when I'm just like, I'm like, oh, like maybe today's the day. Maybe today. Okay. That's, that's mine. Um, no. I will let Mama see the. I like Walter. Oh, th- there, like you, there Walter. you go. So we have E Block, which was uh, it, that building was never a, uh, part of the sanatorium. It was built when um, SCI Crescent started but there's a spirit there by the name of walter and he's kind of like a jokester yeah um and he likes to pretend like the head of the pod he's the head of the pod and uh, he'll interact with us Mm -hmm. and we'll crack jokes and stuff with him that's my favorite (laughs) okay that's her safe zone yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay so i guess the next question might be a bit of a i don't know um catch 22 in the sense that given the answers that you've just given um, maybe you don't ever feel this way, but have you ever felt scared or threatened? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't think you could be, I don't think any legit paranormal investigator that's ever set foot on Crescent can honestly say they have never felt all the spectrum of emotion yeah. on this location. Yeah. Never speaking negative about Crescent, but I'm just saying when we say you will feel everything, you can experience anything and everything in the paranormal field right here on our property. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've been investigating for 10, 11 years um, and traveled to quite a different, you know, places and Crescent's the most active Absolutely. place paranormal wise that Day-night. I've ever mm-hmm. experienced. And, you know, I've been volunteering and working there for a little over two years now. And I mean, there's, I get scared all the time. <laughs> she <does. laughs> okay. I really but do. I get, she goes in with me. Mm-hmm. She will go in with me, you know? So okay. I think it's, it's a, it's a fair emotion to have in that situation. Like, yeah. yeah. And almost says they're not, I mean, we're, like I said, we are just raw and real. You're going to get scared. Mm-hmm. What the question is, what are you going to do when it happens? That's who you find out what kind of investigator you truly are. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, so in the, I don't know, around two years that you've been doing investigations there, do you have like just a general idea of how many you've done? How many we've done? Like, oh my just goodness! Just an approximate. Because we've, we've gone out during the day too. Like yeah. they they host uh, day tours um, as well, and History I've gone out during all. the day and just walked around and just took equipment with me and investigated during the day for a little bit too. The place is just as active in the day as it is at nighttime. Yeah. So I mean that's we've had. I, I can honestly safe to say we have thousands of people have come and investigated with us that have passed through with us. There were nights that. Me and her have been up there with two or three investigators. Uh, Brian and Michaela, that's actually how we met them. They came up and met us. Now, you know, they're, we're having dinner at homes and they're watching our kids. And and uh, um, it's uh, we'll go up there. We've been there with two people that have come with us. We have been up there with 118 people. So it's like, I mean, there's been months where we've worked with five, 600 people at a time. There's been months where we've worked with 50 people at a time. Yeah. So there, it's countless. We've, yeah, we've just been up there so much yeah, it's, in it's, two years. It's hard yeah. to everything we want well, you... it's like our home it's we seriously like i consider it our home mm-hmm. we were supposed to get married there it's like it's our big life thing oh yeah. really you're gonna get married there uh that was actually where we met the, and, yeah well that's... so yeah that's how An- angel and i met there at crescent um and that's kind of how our love story started yeah, um uh-huh. and you know so crescent has a very very special place in yes. our heart like not only is it you know the history is amazing the paranormal activity is amazing the property is beautiful but then you know our it was our first story. date it yeah. was our first date our first kiss was in building five the original building uh you know before everything has happened uh we were set to get married in the chapel um i'm a contract i was just gonna say there was a chapel there you could get married yeah. Yeah. Chapel, the <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful grace chapel i was good that i was gonna ask about greece um you know so what i'm a big I'm a big church nerd, so like no, that's cool. structure, stained yeah. glass, things like that. Yeah. yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about Grace Chapel. Um, it so it was built in 1914, and um, it originally it was built by three different. Um, there was a pastor, 
a mm-hmm. rabbi, and I f- yeah. forget who else. Your question was actually perfect yeah. with it because at one point there was a spinning altar with mm-hmm. different religions, so, so you, you went there spin. to have your section. Yeah, you would spin it for whatever okay. religion yeah. they were hosting at the time. Unfortunately, at some point the jail covered yeah. covered it up, but we think that it's still there, there and underneath. it's just boxed in uh-huh. um, before the um, before the legal battle took place and. Um, I'm not sure how much you know about that, but we're um, not allowed on the property at this time. While that everything's case is, just at hold. Yeah, while the case is going on, but before that took place, we were actually talking about uncovering that and seeing uh-huh. if that yeah. was still there, and we were going to preserve it and bring it back if it yeah. was there. Because uh, the picture oh, yeah. that we got, like the wheels that spun on the altar, it's like someone just drove a couple nails. So we, I was actually going to fix the the entrance flooring, the joist, mm-hmm. that way she could walk down the aisle, have her big entrance. So it was like when we got that opportunity, I was going to crawl through there and be able to take the pictures and see like that it's it's really it. And uh, we had, we do have there are photos. Um, there is photos. Let's dig them up of how it how it yeah. looked and uh, the rotating altar itself. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. I hope yeah, that works awesome. out for you guys. Beautiful photos. Mm-hmm. Are um, we invited? <laughs> imagine all of those guests that are already there just waiting for you to come back like uh that. it's a it's a beautiful story when i say we have uh you know brian is one of our groomsmen michaela is one of the bridesmaids it's like uh that uh when i say literally it's a family we we are a family at crest that's yeah. why we, we call ourselves the sand fam like it's mm-hmm. it's a lot more than just you're going to a place to just investigate like we consider it we're going home. We're going home. Hanging what out are you guys family. doing? Like, where do you guys want to see? In two years, I guarantee you, there's still places that we haven't even seen. You know, yeah, so it's, it's it's massive. It, it, you never, I mean, you have your Penhurst, you have your, you know, your Missouri States and stuff like that, but you don't have a Crescent Sanatorium. Well, with all of the time that you've spent there, I'm just curious, do you have any type of centralized library that you keep your your evidence in um you so know, we have like share. our main hub uh, visitor to our uh, building two is like where you know our central command um we usually we, we have our website and everything but we all kind of like keep our evidence amongst ourselves like i said there, and, uh, there is a uh, a group on facebook yes. called the haunted crescent sanatorium in prison yeah. if you join that group um, what we were trying to do is we were trying to get guests as well as ourselves to start um, uploading any evidence yeah. they find onto this group page so everyone can see it. Um, and there are a couple, there's a couple different pictures on there. I think yeah. there is a couple different videos Absolutely. on there that people have I mean, shared. There's a whole bunch of people that have platforms. I mean, TikTok, everything. I mean, it's, we've met crazy YouTubers. We've met, you know, a lot of people on TV. I mean, it's just... Uh, there are so many people how like you started off that, oh my God, I've been here forever. I've traveled through here. I didn't know it was literally right here behind the woods. And it's just, uh, you go there, you experience some craziness, man. Like in the best way, in the best way. Yeah. Well, that's exactly, I was telling you before we started to record, that's kind of exactly the experience that I had yeah. with, with mm-hmm. the sand. I have not been able to visit yet, but um, I fully intend to. Like it blew my mind. I live so close to it, and I and I didn't even know that it existed. It's beautiful, man. But it's 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 so beautiful. Yeah. She calls it her big beautiful beast. Yeah, it's funny because I I grew up in Evansburg, so I grew up relatively close to Crescent, and uh, I remember when SCI Crescent closed, and I knew it was a prison. But then after it closes, when people started to be like, "Did you know that it used to be a TV yeah, yeah. sanatorium?" and I was like, "What really?" and I heard rumors of it, but it's so tucked back in. You don't, you can't see it from any main road, so you have no idea how big it is. And I remember, uh, like a little over two years ago, I saw an ad on Facebook um, from Big House Produce saying, "Hey, come visit the old Crescent Sanatorium in prison and tour the place." And I was like, "What?" And I got a hold of them right away, and I was like, "Can I investigate it? It has to be haunted." And uh, they came up and they let me tour the place, and I was like, "I had no idea this massive complex is hidden back in the woods. It's completely mind blowing." Yeah, the only other thing she found from- so much was me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, save that for after the podcast. <laughs> This, uh, no, it's funny though. So I grew up in the Catanning, Indiana area. Yeah. And you know, um, Evansburg, and that was I've been there many times. And I also I knew about Crescent for a long time, but I thought it was just kind of like one of those things where it's like, all right, somebody heard a, a knock on a door, or I didn't realize it was such an intimate 
experience. Oh, yeah. but unfortunately, I live in Cleveland now. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> we, okay. but, <laughs> we just yes. It. Mm-hmm. Well, I was right here. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, we came just, back from the state of Indiana. Yeah, today, this, this morning. Uh, that's right. You said you were at um, Monroe, House. Monroe House. Yeah, yeah, Monroe House. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, eventually, the TV problem kind of went away, and the property switched into a state school scenario. Yes. And we know that, especially in that period of time that was not a very good living environment for just about anybody who spent time there as Gerardo Rivera told us in the 80s um I'm curious if you've met any any spirits there f- that have identified themselves as being there from that era so to speak maybe not tv patients but now moving forward into the state school era um we've We've talked to a couple of spirits that have said that they were patients and some of them will tell us when and some of them don't. Yeah. Um, we, but we've run into all eras. Yeah. All eras. I mean, we, yeah. she's saying it perfectly. We've run into where they have identified as uh, an inmate as, uh, you know, the coughing TB and then, like she said, a patience and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So um, we, yeah. I'm sure we have. We've had them identify themselves. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure that we have. Interesting. Um, so I'm going to kind of pivot a little bit and talk about you guys now. Uh, you know, we talked about the history and some of the, the hauntings and stuff for 30 minutes. And I thought it would be cool to kind of learn more about you guys and let you guys have a platform. So yeah, what's your social security numbers? <laughs> 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 Only oh, real slow. Like on tax season. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious. Let's start with. Uh, you, so we talked about ghost hunters um, before I started to record, and you know how the show is featured on ghost hunters. Uh, how how many paranormal shows have you been featured on? Crescent, oh, Cre- you mean Crescent? Or are you talking about us individually? Oh, you could you could talk about yourselves individually as well, just colloquially. So. So we've um, had, uh, like you said, Ghost Hunters has been there. Um, um, previous Destination, Destination Fear, Project Fear. Fear, and I was she was actually featured on the show. Mm-hmm. Eight that's appearances, really cool. exactly. So <laughs> oh, that's cool. We actually met up with a guy uh, this weekend, and he was like, "You don't know who you're you're sitting next to. This is Lindsay Rogers, <laughs> you know." So, um, no, um, but uh, it's been featured on a handful. Yeah, uh, Ghost Brothers was there. Ghost too. Brothers yeah, was so there. Was um, yeah. Numerous YouTubers. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a. Uh, are okay are the ghost brothers as cool as they seem on tv or is that just like heavy editing because those dudes seem like they're they're wild i actually didn't meet them when we they didn't came. meet them but i did hear that they are a riot i did hear that they're a riot so uh you know kudos to them i know when uh taps was there i was uh i was a trainer for the east coast and i roll up and some guys like stop stop and uh I look and I see these big black bands and I'm like, oh my lord, who is this? And then I see Taps and I'm just like, oh my goodness, like these are these are the guys, you know? And uh, I mean, yeah, they're so awesome. We, we we dealt with a lot of cool people. Uh, Destination Fear was awesome, or they're now called Project. Yeah, Fear. Project Fear. And, they were uh, very down to earth. Yeah, we got to hang out with them at, when we said Penhurst Paracon. Penhurst. All of them were there, mm-hmm. and it was just like. It was just so cool because we were there for what two three days. Mm-hmm. I didn't mean by the end of it, you know, you're just grabbing food and you go over there, and you know, next thing you know, I'm like, eh, "What's up, Dakota?" You know what I'm saying? They're like, "Hey, Grant." You know, Steve Gonzalez walks by me and Lindsay, and it's like, "Hey, come over here, guys!" Like, we know y'all. So I mean, it was kind of like <laughs> it's like starstruck, you know. But it's a it's a beautiful community, man. We've had uh, we've been I blessed. Met, I met Steve, I think probably around 2009, and it was a really long time ago. Yeah, and. He couldn't have been nicer. He was just the he's coolest dude. Really he's so cool. He's down to earth. Absolutely. Asked to take a picture with us. I mean, we're the ones yeah. melting. He was like, I know you guys can <laughs> have a picture. I'm like, what are you saying to me? <laughs> you know? so, it's so yeah, cool. what, I was so scared to talk to him about anything ghost or haunted related. So I can't even remember what, what the conversation was like. But yeah. I know we didn't cover any of this stuff. It's because yeah. I didn't want to be that weird, annoying guy who's like, oh, dude, let's talk about ghosts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what's cool is they uh 
we have the personalities that, you know, even Brian and Michaela, it's just kind of like we make friends with everyone. And it's like we just the biggest thing that I've ever heard anyone being in this field is like, don't automatically assume you have to come and just talk about ghosts. Come learn about us. Come say hi. We all have stories. We all know what we do. We all know our profession. But we're everyday people, you know, so it's like it's really cool. So, yes, Steve, all them, they're just completely down to earth could sit down, have a conversation, and laugh, and just high five, see you later type of people. Even uh, who else did we just recently meet? Uh, Heather Taddy. Oh yeah. From uh, we the old show Paranormal State, we met them at okay. uh, Moundsville. West, Moundsville, West Virginia Penitentiary had a pair con about a month ago, and she yeah. actually walked up to yeah. our table and I built a coffin, and she wanted to meet the builder of it, yeah. and uh, yeah, we found out you know she's a local Altoona girl, and uh, you know had to get. Her and Lindsay's picture together, and she was cool, yeah. cool as can be. Like, hey, what's up? You know, like, where you been? And she's like, oh, you know, well, me and Katrina, you know, they got stuff going on. And it's just crazy to talk about all the big names that we grew up watching, and we're just like, oh, hey, okay. tell them I said hi. <laughs> yeah, 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 like you made yeah, it. You're uh, you're one of them. But yeah. as somebody who grows up in a fandom, you're yeah. just n- never able to kind of grasp your your mind around yeah. it. You yeah. could be yeah, like exactly. that for you know ten years from now still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you so said I totally, totally. I it understand like, that. You get that like uh you know that first year or two the the stardom like oh my god you have no idea who I just and then like you just run into them next time and you're just like hey what's up like how you doing like what are you doing these days you know what I'm saying yeah. like it's it's yeah. pretty it's surreal it's mm-hmm. surreal like I said we're completely blessed completely yeah. blessed so um I had a question um I guess based on this conversation you guys aren't involved with the hydroponics business that's that was put there the um it it's kind of separate it's a separate entity it's the same but it's separate if that makes any sense at all um the the people who uh big house produce is who was running the tours and who we are employed through um they originally um leased the property to do a hydroponics farm they had no idea what they were getting themselves into with the tourism and the paranormal Thank, big and thanks to Lindsay right people here like me started blowing them up like hey i want to tour this place you can make money off this you know and yeah. uh so yeah the hydroponics business they 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 kept that down at the juvenile center which is toward yeah. the entrance um, closer to the entrance and then um the main campus yeah. is where all the tourism kind of took place so i mean it's kind of ran business owned by the same yeah. people but Angel and I are just paranormal investigators. Yeah. We because don't there's know lots of different things farming. that go on there. The urbex, you know, the photography. Yeah. It's not just paranormal or just mm-hmm. hydroponics at yeah. all. Like it's oh, okay. Uh, we have all aspects over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a completely mm-hmm. different. You know, oh, we have that's interesting. I'd love to come and just explore. We've had yeah. people that specifically love to come and do some modeling, like to just mm-hmm. do the photography. You know, um, wedding photos. Uh, you know, and then you have your hydroponics you have your agricultural side and then you have like Lindsay said our side you know it's uh yeah. we have a lot of different phases to it mm-hmm. are there still uh, areas that are um set up as the prison that it eventually became in the 80s are like, you, you saying st- like you, i mean you could tell us a prison with like, a yeah like wall? cells and stuff yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely so it's it's very unique like uh when you when you see the property, there's so many buildings. Mm-hmm. Like I said, there's like over 20 buildings in the 34 acres um, that's fenced in. So number one, there's a huge fence when you drive back there. So you could tell that this is a prison complex. But as you walk through the property, you see, you could tell the difference between what was the TV and what was the prison because all the tuberculosis buildings have a Tudor style look to them. Yeah, they're all very similar. They're all they all look Tudor style, and then you have the cell blocks that are red brick. Yeah. So you okay. can tell cool. what was old and what was new, and there's like a combination. Yeah, of structurally, both. you could just tell yeah. separate the yeah. time periods. Okay, cool. Um, well. I'm going to wrap up here in a moment, but one thing that I wanted to kind of give you guys the opportunity to, 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 uh, to talk about, um, if you're allowed to, is the legal battle. And I noticed that you have the Crescent on tour, and yes. I was just curious, um, anything that you, that you uh, can say that can help in any way, you're welcome to, and to talk about Crescent on tour. And just let listeners know how we can help. 
and support you. Absolutely. Plug it. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, the, we're we're in a legal dis- uh, legal battle right now. Um, the original landlord, Carl Weaver, um, owns the property. Um, he Big House Produce was in a lease to buy, um, and in that agreement, someone else came in. This military preservation group came in and offered a higher amount, um, and then Carl kind of bullied his way around. Um, so we're in the middle of that. Events have been suspended. Everything is suspended right now, currently. Yeah. So um, that's about as much as I could say about that. Um, okay. There's this military preservation group that's claiming that they already own the property and that they're going to run events, and that's that's false information. Yeah, no, no. Um, there, everything if, is still if under you rooms. if you look up the property deed, it's still under Carl Weaver's name, yeah. um, and it's still if you look up the the case, it's still an active case in the Supreme Court. So. Oh, yes. Everything is still active. We're still fighting. Um, there is a GoFundMe that's out to try to help um, because we've had to hire an additional lawyer to, that's a little bit yeah. more aggressive. Um, so we have a we, website now. Yeah. Was it Crescent? Yeah. So we have a website called the, the CrescentSanatorium.com. Um, on there, that will link you to the GoFundMe to help donate to help us save the sanatorium. Um, there's also um, merchandise you can purchase, yes. like T-shirts, coffee mugs, That'll things help like to that. Go to the cause. That goes toward the cause. Um, and then we're also doing um, the on the on tour it, stuff. It bur- yeah. So, Boom! Now to the birth of Crescent San- the Sand Fam on the road. On the road. So we're just taking all of the staff, and we're uh-huh. visiting other locations, um, helping support them and their business. Yes. Um, but that also helps us with uh-huh. our mission to try to save the sanatorium. Yeah. And letting um, everyone know, letting mm-hmm. everyone know that we're we're here. We're here. We're still gonna have fun. Come out and hang out with us. All of our friends, Brian and Michaela, you know, funny enough is tomorrow's a, a big day for tomorrow's us. Tomorrow's the first event that we're hosting uh-huh. on the road. Um, we will yep. be at the Nancy Glow um, Haunted Liberty Haunted Theater. Liberty Theater. Um, okay. We're this running is... that tomorrow. Yeah. Now um, another first good. for me, hearing about something locally haunted oh, that yeah. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, know about the, I know about this place. Yeah. yeah. I don't even live there anymore. <laughs> I live in Hastings. Like, how do I not know this stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to rock it. We're, um, we're actually, uh, we're doing a history walkthrough tour. Mm-hmm. Um, we're doing a, uh, you know, come and eat with us. I'm actually going to be cooking for everyone. Mm-hmm. We're going to be doing like a nice buffet style and, uh, you know, rock and roll, hang out. And then we're going to do some investigating, run some rotations and uh, teach you how to use some equipment and uh, give you. Uh, you know, two locations actually to spoil it and uh, let you free roam, investigate it yourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, we're all going to be there, Brian, Michaela, a handful of the Sand Fam, and uh, this is just the first of many. Um, yeah. Another big thing that we're going to do that we're announcing is uh, Friendsgiving. Yeah. So we'll be hosting another one. We're in the process of trying to book um, another one for November, um, and we'll call it Friendsgiving and invite you to come have Thanksgiving with us and investigate the Nanny Glow mm-hmm. Theater. Um, but we're also actively looking for other locations yes. to host events. We've been talking to a couple of different places. Um, so definitely, you know, stay tuned on our Crescent page. Stay yep. tuned on the Facebook page because we'll announce all of that. The ticket sales will all be on the crescentsanatorium.com um, website. And like I said, any location that we host an event at, it's helping both that location as well yep. as us to try to save the sand. Yeah, we're so we're all about spreading the love. Mm-hmm. You know, just it, 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 we're still it's here. important to. It's important to do that. And I think the paranormal community is one of those communities yes. where almost by virtue, we have to stick together. Oh, There's yeah. so, so many naysayers, mm-hmm. so many people who, who want to criti- criticize, you know, our beliefs and, and the stuff that, that we, that we know are true mm-hmm. and yeah. their unwillingness to accept facts <clears throat> then become shifted reality, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So I think, Everything that you just said is fantastic. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I love that you guys are doing it. I love that you guys are putting up a fight. I need you guys to win that fight so I can come hang <laughs> out at this sanatorium. Um, we're all about uh, I, positive, I, light, positive, yeah. positive vibes. It's going to be a lengthy process. I will tell you that because I know a lot of people are like, have you heard anything yet? Because yeah. it's been in the Supreme Court's hands since I think about July, August. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we're at the mercy of their timeline. You know, yeah. it's a Supreme Court. Um, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if this doesn't get drug out for about another year, to be honest with you. So 
it's a lengthy process. We're fighting. We're not giving up. Yeah, um, we're still here. That's why we're yeah. on the we're on the road, letting you know that we're uh, we're all in this together, no matter what, and we're still gonna do what we love, and we want everyone to come together, no yeah. matter what, where, no matter what location. So, big thing for us. And with that said, I don't see how anybody could not be supportive of you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's there's some major so, concerns with this military group that's trying to you know take over. You know they it's have, the military. So. <laughs> they have they have no they have no experience in it. And granted, when you know when Big House Produce took over, they didn't either. But we had so many plans for preservation to have a museum put on the property. Um, as well as several other things that I can't really talk about, but just know that they were, you know, big plans yeah. for the future. That we would still have, have big plans. Yeah, for the future. That, that's still on the, you know, it's still being planned if we can get it back. But you know, this they've been caught in lies on Facebook saying that they're going to do something, and then you see, you know, conflict where you know they said we're going to do the paranormal too, but then there was comments on YouTube mm. saying no, we're going to. Um, we're going to build, we're going to use this for LARP events and we're going to dig trenches and we're going to do reenactments on this site. And we're like, where's the preservation? These are historic buildings. Yeah, like, Especially with preservation in your name. And they said, like, it's, come on. Now. Yeah. And then it was, we're going to preserve the buildings. And then the next post is, hey, can you help us with a GoFundMe? We need help cutting grass because we didn't realize how much, you know, it was going to cost to cut grass up here. And we're like, what? What are you guys doing? I think, I think ultimately with things like that is the, Unfortunately, would probably demolish the entire grounds at some point. Uh, yeah. My, yeah, that's and that's everybody. Made my head itch on that one. In addition yeah. to the fact, in addition to the fact of rumors of them displaying Nazi symbols everywhere uh, they go, yeah. um, this group was this group had actually asked Big House Produce to do a reenactment um, about a year or so ago on the property. What are we? What are we reenacting? The World War II. World War II era, and I mean they they have websites that show everything. They and the advertisers. They just... ask. They asked to, to do a reenactment, and um, Big House Produce said, "As long as you don't display the Nazi symbol, um, because one of the owners is Jewish." And they said, "As long as you do not display the Nazi symbol," and they refused to do that. So therefore the event didn't take place and then they try and to then, outbid yeah. them on the property. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, so there's some personal issues here more than just trying to yes. take yeah. ownership yeah. of a building. And there's general like community distress. Like people are concerned that are in that area because you here have you have this, problems. this, this group of people that could potentially, you know, be Nazi synthesizers. And now they have this major campus this major campus, this compound mm -hmm. that they could be living in and doing whatever, whatever they, they want, want there. You know? And, and then no one wants to hear all these bombs and shootings going off in the middle of the night. And I mean, it's just like, come on. I mean, you know, best of all, other than Crescent, you know, you don't want to hear, you know, wars going on. I thought on you there. were going to say Cleveland. I thought you were dunking <laughs> on me. <laughs> no, 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 man. No, 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 no. I'm just not a football fan. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were dunking on me. No, bro, bro. no, I'm dunking on them. It's just their vision. Is just, they're the complete opposite of the spectrum of what we are. And uh, that's why it's really important to us. Just We just want to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. We're not even here to really badmouth, terrible. They are doing a very good job on doing it all by themselves. Mm -hmm. We just want to spread our love our light to our supporters people like y'all we greatly appreciate you know sharing the love yeah. and that's our main purpose we want to just bring everyone together like you said this tight-knit community we just mm -hmm. we don't want no bs we just want to do what we love with the people that we love and this location I mean, is amazing yeah. and i just want to share it with absolutely everybody yeah, i think absolutely. everybody should experience it i mean and it's more than like we talked about earlier it's more than just the paranormal there's day tours people come up and they just yeah. they just walk around they they get the history or you, we allow you to free room where you just have like a time period where you come up and you just walk around and you just do yeah. a self-exploration whatever you own. want you know it's you don't get that everywhere no not on a location you, like most that. places force you to do a guided tour and then they yeah. charge you this astronomical amount and we don't do that we give you, you an option show you, like, do you want a free roam this. do you want a free roam here's a map have fun mm -hmm. or do you want a guided you know our guided history tour is two hours because by the time we got done showing you and telling you everything in two hours we still haven't showed you everything no bring your is. bring your walking shoes you know you're getting your steps in that <laughs> yeah. day a hundred percent 
You know, my thighs look yep. amazing since I started. <laughs> I was just going to ask, actually. <laughs> How are your thighs? Can you show them off on camera. My, my presence a big reason why we can keep up with the four kids. A hundred percent. Okay, well, with all of that said, I wish you guys nothing but the best. I'm going to be absolutely supportive. I can't thank you enough for coming on to the show. Well, thank you all for having us. I'm going to go ahead and and free you guys from our uh, our restraints on this podcast. And, you know, I loved it. And I if you ever want to do it again, uh, we're here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, Rock and roll. Yeah. That's totally cool. Yeah. Um, looking forward to it. Stay in touch. I really uh, – yeah. this was fun. I really enjoyed this. Two, even if, two goals. Even if two good souls. Fun. Bless you guys. We got crescentsanatorium.com. And what was the Facebook group? There's a Facebook group called oh. Haunted Crescent Sanatorium in Prison. Yeah. Okay. You Perfect. Have to ask to join it, and then an administrator will go in and approve it. Uh, yep. So I will get denied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, I mean, they, they wouldn't be incorrect to do that. He's very annoying. You have to know him your whole life. Uh, we, we, we accept everyone. Yeah, basically, everyone. as long as you agree to the community standards. If you don't yeah. agree, we deny you. But if, as long as you yeah. agree, don't we wear your brown well, <laughs> So This is going to sound this is going to sound like a joke, but we end every episode with either thanks for squatching or squatch you later. And we've been. Doing I was curious. Festivals. Like we're all for it. <laughs> I was curious if you wanted to maybe go ahead and end the show with one of those. Absolutely. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, Which yeah. I think Squatch a Leader sounds good, right? <laughs> that's just because he. That's the one he came up with. So I'm going to let you two choose whichever one you want. There's no favorites here, but um, squatching. Your discretion. Yeah. Squatching. Yeah. Ready? What? Yep. All right, ready? One, two, three. Thanks, Thanks for, for squatching. squatching. Thanks for squatching, everyone. Yeah, squatch you later. Squatch <laughs> you later. Oh. <laughs>